advanced troubleshooting video, we discussed DBM in detail and provided a few examples. In this video, we're going to show a real-time demonstration of how components and cables affect DBM. For the following examples, we'll be using a DOT2 dish and LMB. For the first setup, we'll keep it simple. We're going to connect the Super Buddy to a 10-foot jumper. But before we show the results of the first limit scan, let's think through the DBM loss that we should expect to see, theoretically. When we point and peak a dish to the best of our ability, we will normally see DBM in the range of minus 29 to minus 32. The connector at the dish and the connector at the Super Buddy will account for an initial loss of 1 DBM. With the 10 feet of cable, you can expect an additional 1 dBm loss. So if this dish is peaked properly, the initial limit scan at the dish should be between minus 31 and minus 34. For this initial limit scan, there is a reading of minus 34.2. Even though we're not seeing the exact dBm that we anticipated, it is close enough to know that there are no bad components along this particular signal path. In the second setup, we're going to use the same 10-foot jumper, but this time it will be connected to a barrel and another 20 feet of cable. As we previously discovered, the initial reading at this dish was minus 34.2. That included the connector at the LMB, 10 feet of jumper cable, and another connector at the Super Buddy. For the second setup, we can expect to lose 5 dBm through the barrel and another 1 dBm for the connectors on each side of the barrel. The 20 feet of additional cable will result in a dBm loss of about 2, bringing the total loss to approximately 3.5 dBm. The limit scan should reveal a reading of around minus 37.7 at the end of this signal path. The limit scan shows minus 36.7. We can see here how more cable, connectors, and components affect the signal power through a system. Whenever possible, we need to avoid adding unnecessary barrels, connectors, or other components along the signal path. Think about how water flow would be affected by using a hose that's been duct taped together as opposed to a solid hose. At first it would likely cause only limited issues, but over time the splice sections of hose would start to leak more and more. Remember, from a TC, CSAT, and QA perspective, you own this job now. So it's important to identify problems that may cause service issues in the future. Completing final quick checks will help accomplish this. For the purpose of this video, let's assume that the technician has resolved the customer's issue and is moving on to final quick checks. Here, he notices the condition of the cable between the LNBF and the ground block. Even though we got a good DBM and IRD reading on the limit scan behind the receiver, the cable looks damaged. It might not be an issue now, but in the future it could cause signal problems for the customer. By replacing the cable in this situation, you help keep the customer satisfied with our service by preventing a repeat trouble call. Final quick checks are a critical part of customer satisfaction and ensuring a reduced repeat TC rate. Thanks for your time and attention, and thanks for all your hard work in helping us keep our customers happy, reduce trouble calls, and become best in class.